Let me. You want us? Then we should start again. So. No, no, no. It's good. It's good. Hi, my name is Lowell Joseph Gallen, and I would like to welcome our viewers and listeners to this evening's edition of my internet YouTube talk show channel, The Lowell Joseph Gallen Show. Uh, I would like to welcome my uh, co-host, Dr. Les Glassman, for this evening's interview, and we would both like to welcome our guest, Mr. Tzvi Misinai. Shalom Svi. Shalom. Thank Shalom you for Svi. coming to Jerusalem. The subject of this particular interview is the Jewish roots of Israel's Palestinians, but we're going to have two shorter interviews. What's the subject for this first think, segment? Uh, segment? It's interesting, the uh, Arab world and, and Israel. Okay, yeah. the Arab world and Israel. Just like to say, as always do at the beginning, today is Thursday. July 27, 2017, the 4th of Av, 5077. And now we'll begin. Oh, Les always has the first question or comment. Les. Thank you. It's going to be more of a comment, but thank you so much, Sir Lowell. Um, I just came back from uh, South Africa and I went via Egypt Air <coughs> to back to Israel. And on the plane, they gave out uh, the Egyptian Gazette. Uh, here it is. It was uh, dated. Um, Saturday, July the 15th, 2017. Uh, you can get this newspaper in Cairo, in Alexandria, and all the cities in Egypt. It's the English version of the Egyptian Gazette. And I was paging through it, and I came across the most fascinating op-ed that I've ever read, actually. It's by uh, Sami al Shahed, and he speaks about the 12 spies, the, the Miraglim, the spies. In an Egyptian newspaper. In an Egyptian newspaper, and, and it's a uh, it's a uh, quite a long article about the biblical story of the twelve spies, but how he ends off, and it's so applicable because this week is we in the the last nine days of the three weeks, and uh, Tuesday is going to be Tisha B'Av, and he ends off his article saying, "According, I'll just mention it, and then I'd love to have your, and we would love to have your opinion." So, according to rabbinic tradition. As seen in Mishnah Ta'anit. This is what he writes in the Egyptian is, Gazette? This is in the Egyptian Gazette, which was it published last hearts. week. According to rabbinic tradition, as seen in Mishnah Ta'anit 4.6, the sin of the spies produced the annual fast day of Tisha B'Av. When the Israelites accepted the false report, they wept over the false belief that God was setting them up for defeat. The night that the people cried was the ninth of Av which became a day of weeping and misfortune for all time. And this is written by Sami um, Al-Shahed. The whole article can be found in um, the Saturday edition of the Egyptian Gazette. It's the most incredible article. And it just shows, you know, it's so topical what's happening on the Temple Mount and what's happening um, you know, in the Arab world and in the Muslim world in general. Um, in Cape Town, for example, yesterday there was a march to close the Israeli embassy from South Africa because of the anger that people are feeling what's happening on the Temple Mount, even though we've actually taken down the barriers and everything. But the, So it's very topical. So we'd love to have your, your response and your views on um, something positive that we, in the news, it's not only negative. Okay. Um, we have to take the current situation in the Temple Mount in proportion. There have been a lot of incidents in the past, much bigger and some smaller, but in general, this is typical to what can happen from time to time, especially when there is a negligence of dealing with the Palestinian public that uh, many people are feeling deprived. The P Palestinian Authority is embezzling every year about two billion euros. Billion? Yeah. Billion. And which is supposed to be for the benefit of the people. And 
and the, the people are really neglected. The, the Palestinian politicians are blaming Israel for all the troubles. So, of course, there is a lot of uproar from time to time. It has been a, a year ago and more of all the youngsters coming and killing and stabbing in the streets. All these youngsters be, have been educated by the education system of the Palestinian Authority. They are naive. They didn't experience the past uh, mistakes that were done. So they are doing this mistake again and again. And what happens here is just a deterioration of one incident. So, but the question in general is the entire Arab world. The entire Arab world is experience, experiencing a major deterioration that started initially with Arab Spring in Tunisia and then moved to other Arab countries. The main uh, disaster is in Syria, but Iraq is not much better. Yeah. Libya is a bit uh, less problematic. Yemen is problematic. Egypt is problematic from the point of view of the economy. Saudi is also very afraid of troubles internally and mainly from Iran. Lebanon is in trouble, though current situation is not uh, that worse, but they don't know what to expect next from Hezbollah if Hezbollah will not be busy with Syria. So, and mainly they are afraid from Iran, like we bother about it as well. So altogether, the Arab world is in a major deterioration. Some countries more, some countries less. In the beginning of the 21st century, there was a caricature in a Jordanian newspaper showing stairs where the, the world population is going upstairs and the Arabs going downstairs. But nobody expected at that time the results of what was called the Arab Spring. Yeah. So, so this is much worse than all their bad dreams. And the main problem with the Arab population or the Arab world is they don't understand what is the problem. They don't understand why they have these uh, troubles. They blame their leaders, that they are crooks and stealing money. They blame the West of conspiracies against them. They blame everybody else, but they are supposed to be perfect. And there is a reason. The, the Arab population, most, most of it, is clever, but they're still in problem. So it's very easy to blame the others, especially that they see that most of the others even are not capable to understand the problems of the Arab world. And any intervention that comes in, whether in Libya or in Iraq initially, is just causing more troubles. So, so they, uh, what they're saying is, to me, when I'm discussing it with them, they're saying we have these troubles because of our liquor leaders and because of conspiracies of foreigners. But I'm asking them, why it happens only to you? Why it's not happening to others? Which means you have a basic problem that causes you to be in this lousy situation. And the, the issue is they don't have a clue what it is. Many know one side of it, which is the Arab morality. The Arab desert morality that somehow to Islam penetrated the region, which means they don't care to lie, to cheat, to steal whenever it's possible. Actually, in their culture, if you had an opportunity, it's not everywhere, but it's a lot, opportunity to cheat or to steal and you didn't use it, you're a stupid one. And they think that they are wise cheating others which are naive and all the West is like this, but they don't believe that they will cheat each other. So this is why this situation is worse, because you cannot rely on anything. Anything, 80% of their CPU, of their thinking, 
is concentrated, what the other one is uh, planning in order to cheat them, to steal them, or to somehow can, can deprive I say them. something on this? Yeah. Page? There was a BBC interview um, on Tuesday, two days ago, where uh, they interviewed a Palestinian leader, and they said, well, why did you bring arms up to the, the Temple Mount? Well, they said, the Mosque of Omar, why, why did you bring them up on the, to the mosque? So they said, we didn't, there was no arms, there was no, there was, prove it, there was nothing. And then they interviewed the Deputy Foreign Minister of Israel and said, well, uh, the, the Palestinian leader said that we, they, there was no arms. And she said, well, they're lying. Two people were killed with, with, with guns. Where did it come from? So you see exactly what you're saying. It was, uh, but there it was in the open on BBC. It was, it was incredible to see that. So th this is the first of our two six-minute interviews, which is Israel in the wider Arab world and the whole problem of Arab culture and thinking and why their world is a mess and it's getting worse. Yeah. Okay, so that's one basic problem. And the next talk we'll do is on the subject yeah, of... But, but we didn't finish this yet. Uh, okay. Churchill, about 120 years ago, mentioned the Islam is a culture that the people that are part of this culture will always have problems. And there's no way for them out of these problems. They always complain about their situation, rightfully complain, and, don't, and blame others and don't know how to get out of this situation. This was mentioned by Churchill that has this uh, envision of, a vision of what happens in the Muslim countries. But the reason for this situation is that the culture of Islam was taken from the Arab culture. So one thing, morality, I mentioned, but there is another, and this is known by many. Not everybody, people may be surprised of the level of cheating and, and lying, but many know about it. However, the other side, which is a main reason even more stronger than the morality, is the language. The Arab language is a disaster. It's, it looks like something that was given to them as a punishment. What happens? This will take altogether more than six minutes, but I think it's important to know. There are two Arab languages in general. There are some dialects and so on, but in general two. The, what is called the literature, the literature Arabic, or the classical Arabic, and the spoken Arabic. And the kid that initially grows at home, like everybody else, and speaks uh, spoken Arabic, when he gets to school, he has to learn another, he wants to just to read and write, but he has to learn another language, <coughs> the classical Arabic. The classical Arabic is 50% totally different than the spoken, and 50% similar, but still you have to know the differences. So the poor kid has to learn another language and has to get to the complexity of the differences. But the 50%, which is entirely different, is very complex, like Latin. The complexity, I will not get to specific, but it's too complex. So you get the population, the Arab population in general, you can split it into three parts. The more experienced and wiser people can learn the language, no problem. The language has a lot of details, a lot of things to remember. It's called, to justify it, called it's very rich language. But the, the language should be a tool, it's not a target. So they, the talented Arabs, they are very talented with details. They can be good in medicine, they can be good in history, they can be good in literature. And, and they, they can excel in this uh, side. Languages better than everybody else in uh, average. But when you get to uh, precise sciences, punctual sciences like mathematics and physics or logic, they are poor. They cannot manage. 
And this is why there's no high tech in the Arab world. In the best case, they are using technology, and even with this, they get the assistance of foreigners. But they cannot produce their own products and so on. Uh, so that's one side of the strong people. The middle third can read and write, but it's difficult for them. So the result, they can read, but they don't like to read. So they cannot excel in any pro profession, and they are uh, normally, in average situation, some uh, kind of professions which are not too complex, and they don't excel in these uh, professions. The lower third are analphabets. It's third in, in you average. You illiterate. Illiterate, yeah. So a third yeah. of the population is actually illiterate. Yeah, and they don't read. It's very easy, but they, they are clever, they are shrewd. So it's very easy to incite them against anybody, if there's the Jews, if there's a the Shiite, if it is the Christians, because they, they believe what their politician or a, their a religious leaders, like Hajim and Husseini, that didn't know anything or not, didn't know much about Islam, will tell them. So normally the, the foreigners will be blamed and the, the crook leaders will steal. And the situation of the public is lousy, so all the foreigners will be blamed. So that's uh, the tradition. But this situation of people being illiterate is a main part of the problem. But in general, the total situation of the society is poor. And this is why the situation in the Arab countries is that lousy. Their leaders can cheat and steal very large amounts. And the poor population feels bad and easy to incite them against others. So uh, that the two languages is one part of it. Then the spoken Arabic is not, uh, uh, not written and not read. So you don't have any standard. So everybody will enter their own words to the language. And uh, the small kid that encountered this for the first time, he knows the local village of the local city language, but when somebody else, I mean, other from another place, and uses other words that he doesn't know, he asks his father, he tells him, the Arab language is rich, this word for the, this uncle or friend is like our word, such so, so, so. So the poor kid is uh, educated that accuracy is not important. Actually, you have to mock accuracy. Here in Israel, we call this the result of this analphabet or middle uh, level people that can read but don't, don't read, uh, is we are calling it Arab work, which is not accurate. So altogether, the result, they don't have quality for the work. I, I'm, I'm not speaking about everybody, I'm speaking about the majority. So this is another side of the situation, non-standardization, and not giving value for accuracy. I am finishing. We're going to have to conclude, and because we have a lecture coming up by mm. Mr. Misinai, oh. and we had thought to make two separate small interviews. The, the second subject was going to be the Jewish roots of Israel's Palestinians and of so many people in the broader Middle East. That will wait for the lecture. So I want to uh, thank my co-host, for this interview, Dr. Glassman, thank our guest, Mr. Messini. Thank our viewers and listeners for watching and listening. Again, it's uh, Wednesday, July, excuse me, Thursday, July 27, 2017, the 4th of Av, 5077. Uh, we are speaking to you from Jerusalem, Israel, and we wish our viewers and listeners a Shabbat Shalom and in a country where you have a weekend. We don't yet have one in Israel. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much, and please listen to the upcoming lecture, which we'll also be posting, where Mr. Misinai will be speaking about the Jewish roots of Israel's Palestinians. Thank you. Okay, that I'm was sorry, good. it was too long. It, no, it's all right, really. It's not a problem. We're very flexible, and now we have to go. It, it wasn't too long or too short. It was just right for what it was.